Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys. This is the actual first episode of our advanced platformer series and in this video we are going to get started creating some actual stuff for our platformer. If you remember in the last video we basically talked about uh, what to do and what not to do and in this video we are actually going to get started doing stuff. So yeah let, without further delay let's jump right into it. Now in order to start we can start uh, two ways basically we could basically either go ahead and uh, try to you know implement uh, like an animation and some character and stuff like that or we could uh, try to first prototype the game and then add the character personally I like to go with the second approach so we are going to get started uh, trying to create that part of the thing so let's go ahead and uh, you can see in here I have opened up a unity scene and we've got a sample scene with just a main camera and nothing else now you can right click here and add in a 2d scare for example and this gear is kind of positioned here and you can kind of position it in the center of course let's just uh, position it uh, like at zero zero on both the x and the y and uh, this means it's now uh, going to be in the center what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of move it down on the y a bit like that and uh, then make it like larger on the x axis so uh, like that and then maybe we can also color it uh, differently like let's color it uh, uh, blue or perhaps green yeah let's color it green so yeah this is basically going to be our temporary ground so you might want to actually rename it to that ground here and uh, this is going to be a temporary ground of course not uh, like actual ground uh, we'll implement actual ground of course using tile map systems later for now this is just like an you know what you, you what you can call a very basic kind of ground here and we'll have uh, uh, we'll test stuff on this ground uh, and the ground actually not a fair and uh, now in order to make this ground interactable i'm going to first of all kind of make it a bit larger on the y as well and move it a bit further down here uh, like that and perhaps increase it a uh, little more as well so yeah that that's better so let's go in and add a box collider 2d here which should automatically like uh, allow it to be collidable and now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we also add like a rigid body and that we uh, an actual player so for this we are going to add in a capsule for example uh, which is just a 2d shape of course and uh, we are going to position it at zero on the x and uh, on the y let's just position it at one and now what we can do is we can also color it differently if you want to uh, actually we can go ahead and color it in any way we want uh, kind of make it yellow I'll just go ahead and uh, make it yellow here and uh, after that you can see we have got our sprite and of course this is currently not interactable what we'll do is we'll add in a capsule collider 2d capsule collider 2d and you can see that that uh, will automatically get the collect, uh, you know, collider correctly. And now we'll also need to make sure that we uh, add in a rigid body here, just to kind of make sure a rigid body 2D is basically like a physics component, and it, all it will do is it will help us kind of. Uh, Mm, you know see if the physics is working so if everything is going along nicely now we can go on to the movement part you can see it fell on the ground and uh, due to gravity and then it stopped so yeah that's pretty awesome and the next thing uh, by the way if you want you can actually go and uh, rotate it a bit like uh, very less uh, a little bit just a little bit I guess and uh, then what we can do is we can go ahead and run this and what you should see is that uh, it is fully interacted with uh, like fully everything works with physics so yeah you can you can see that so now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and uh, implement uh, some actual movement for this character so you can move left and right first of all the first thing we need to do is need to go in here and uh, constraints and uh, freeze the rotation the reason is because we don't want an actual character to be rotating around we only want the actual character to be like moving left and right and not actually rotate if he hits anything so we are going to freeze the rotation so that uh, the rotation never changes and now we, uh, we can kind of create like a, se a separate script to help us uh, do like a 2d movement system here so let's get started with that so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose add component here and I'm going to choose to add in a custom component of course which I'm going to just call uh, uh, movement component so let's just add that movement component movement and uh, we're going to create it as a new script of course so let's just do that and uh, create and add and that's going to add our script here and uh, we're going to keep our things organized from the very start because uh, we do not want our project to grow too large so let's go ahead and right click and create a new folder here and let's call this uh, actually it's compiling that first 
so let's compile and yeah let's name this uh, folder scripts because it's going to contain all of our scripts so let's go ahead and move uh, movement in here so what we are going to do is uh, we can right click and edit that of course and uh, uh, one more thing we like to do is uh, let's actually go ahead and implement that first so we are going to implement some very basic movement uh, for starters so i'm just going to double click in order to open it up in visual studio and uh, once it has opened up what we'll do is we'll first of all implement like basic left and right movement and uh, yeah maybe also implement jumping and once you have implemented jumping we'll uh, kind of look into uh, in the next video we'll look into ground collision detection and mm, like checking whether we are standing on the ground or not and uh, this is a bit complicated in 2d so we will learn how to do that in the next video so for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for it to open up and uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of zoom in a bit so you guys can see it cl more clearly uh, like that and now we can get started and uh, try to actually implement the code that we need here. But my movement.cs opened up and first of all let me just remove these two using statements we don't really need them. Uh, now we also don't need the start method so first of all let's add a serialized field here which means it's going to be visible in the inspector and the field that we want to serialize is going to be a private float called uh, speed which we are going to set to 1 by default now you could also make this public but uh, we are not going to make that public but instead just serialize it so that we can only change it in the inspector but other classes cannot actually change it so now we are going to go ahead and uh, uh, also create another serialized field which is going to be a rigid body 2d called rb another alternative approach to this is to not make it serialized the RB, uh, rb field and uh, instead in the awake method just set the rb to the get component rigid body but we are going to use this method so that we can kind of set it in the inspector and now what we can do is uh, we can go down here under uh, under our update method and in here we are going to create a vector 2 called velocity which we are going to set to rb.velocity the reason we are going to create a temporary for this is because uh, uh, well we don't want to change the y value of the velocity then we are going to say velocity.x is equal to input.get axis and we are going to get the horizontal axis and uh, then we are going to multiply that by our speed so you can kind of see that uh, we are basically getting the axis the actual horizontal axis and then multiplying it out by our speed and uh, this uh, input.get axis basically horizontal axis means uh, a and D or left and right arrows so it's going to allow us to move that way and uh, the reason we multiply it by speed is of course because we don't want it to be just one we want it to be actual uh, speed here and, uh, and the other thing that we want to do is that uh, we do not actually want to multiply it by time to delta time the reason for that is because the delta time is uh, only used for like uh, when you are actually doing some uh, like movement by hand but we are going to just pass the velocity to a rigid body and it will handle it automatically so we won't do that then we are going to in, in the end we are going to set rb.velocity to this variable we have got here now let's go in here and uh, what we are going to do is uh, uh, we are going to go in here and make sure we actually save that and now unity should automatically compile it once it has compiled what we will need to do is we will need to assign our rigid body and the movement speed as well now i actually tested this script before and i know that one is too slow for movement speed we are going to change that to six now let's go ahead and run this and see whether our player moves left and right or not hopefully our player should move left and right so yeah you can see that our player does move left and right and i am pressing my arrow keys and it's uh, moving and of course currently the camera does not follow the player but instead the player is just stuck in one place with the camera now in order to make the camera follow the player a uh, really easy solution is to just make the camera a uh, child of the player the player is by the way called capsule here uh, I'll rename that in a second but if I do that for example then the camera will follow the player and uh, it uh, kind of works but it's not that awesome uh, because it's just like statically following the player it's uh, it's basically like you know uh, at the exact same location as the player and it's not being a lot of fun so a much better way to do it is to use the uh, uh, like uh, interpolation or something to kind of achieve a smoother camera effect for that there is a package which we can install known as the cine machine so in here uh, what you should see is if I go under unity registry and search for cine machine uh, cine in a machine you can see we have got here is an official package by unity and uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to just hit on install uh, you might also need to download it and then also install it and once we have installed it in our project we should be able to go to the game object menu and add a cinema machine object to our uh, you know uh, 
to our game object here so that uh, our player has got a more smooth movement uh, than like what it had uh, by default so you can see it's basically doing all of that and it should not take that much compile uh, that much time to compile and uh, ready all of the scripts so you can see it has uh, done it so we are going to go under game object and go under cinema machine and we are going to add in you can see there are a bunch of different cameras here so we've got like a virtual camera a free look camera a blend list camera a state driven camera a clear short camera and uh, a, a lot of a lot of other cameras so we're going to go under cinema machine and we're going to add like a 2d camera here so you can see that we have got that and uh, we're going to select this camera and uh, we are going to basically go and you can see it's asking two things first of all one is follow and by the way you want to make sure you set the that to negative one at least uh, or else it won't uh, be able to render everything correctly because uh, if you make the z uh, zero completely so now what we are going to do is uh, follow at we are going to leave look at as is because we don't really want it to look at anything but we are going to make follow at be the player now if i go ahead and run this what you should see is that uh, now we have got a like a much more smooth camera movement you can see the camera kind of uh, follows us in this much smoother manner so you can see that uh, yeah that that actually feels pretty good and of course you can uh, you know go ahead and try to change it I guess you can uh, you can have uh, many different kinds of stuff here you can uh, make it uh, like your own whatever you want and uh, there are a bunch of settings here and you can play around with the settings until you find something you like and you can see we've got that as well we can turn this off and we can check the body to see what stuff we want so yeah this is a really advanced camera but we are going to just leave it as is and uh, uh, is getting the job done for us for now so yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video in the next video we'll implement jumping and the ground detection so stay tuned for that make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video and share this video with other people as well and bye